Welcome back guys. This is the second video of the thermodynamic series. In this video, we will go into elements that will later help us with calculations. In thermodynamics, we explore complex processes and systems. To make these processes easier to understand, we use diagrams, tables and equations. So, let's get started. First, we need to identify the types of processes there are. In this video, we'll take a look at four ways to describe processes. Adiabatic, isothermal, isobaric, and isochoric. Adiabatic processes are processes where there is no heat transfer. In problems or equations, this is usually indicated by saying that the system is well insulated. Isothermal processes are processes where the temperature stays constant. Not to be confused with adiabatic processes, isothermal processes can still have heat flow. It is usually accompanied with a phase change. A way to remember this is that there are two types of heat, sensible heat and latent heat. Sensible heat is observed when the added heat results in a temperature change, while latent heat is observed when the heat results in a phase change. Isobaric processes are processes in which the pressure stays constant. And lastly, isochoric processes, where the volume stays constant. In questions, this is usually indicated by saying that your container is rigid. Once you know with what type of process you are working with, it is easier to understand and do calculations. Another important concept which helps us understand the systems we work with is the state postulate and Gibbs phase rule. These theories help us determine what can be calculated based on the amount of information we have. The state postulate says, if we have a system containing a pure substance, its thermodynamic state and therefore all its intensive properties can be determined from two independent properties. In other words, if you know the value of two independent properties, like volume and temperature, you can determine the phase of your system as well as all the other intensive properties, like pressure. The Gibbs phase rule can be used similarly, but it is not just limited to pure substances. It is used to calculate how many independent variables you need to calculate all the other properties. And here is the formula. The degrees of freedom or how many variables you need, the number of chemical species present, and the number of phases present. We can use these guidelines when working with tables. With time, people documented tables containing all the intensive properties of certain elements. In this course, we will look at steam tables. The steam tables consist of five tables. The subcooled liquid table, the superheated vapor table, the saturated pressure table, saturated temperature table, as well as the saturated solid vapor table. The different tables are at different phases liquid phase and superheated vapor phase, and the saturated tables are mixtures with phases vapor liquid and solid vapor. Let's look at the saturated water table for temperature and pressure, which is a liquid vapor mixture. When you are given temperature, you use the temperature table, and when you are given pressure, you work with the pressure table. The tables are formatted so that there is a column for the liquid and vapor property. The value of your system would be between these two columns. When you want to calculate the property for your system, you need a way to account for both the liquid and the vapor. This is called quality. Quality is just the percentage of vapor versus liquid in your system. One way to calculate it is with the moles of liquid and vapor. Once the quality of your system is known, you can use it to calculate all the intensive properties of your system with the following formula. If the phase is only liquid, your quality would be zero, and we would look only at the liquid property column. If the phase is only vapor, the quality is one, and we look only at the vapor property column. In these tables, you often see that the specific value you are looking for is not listed in the table. Then, all you need to do is simple interpolation. Let's say this column has x values, and this column has y values. The value you were given is between x1 and x2. To calculate the corresponding y value, you just need to use this interpolation formula. Let's do an example to better understand how this works. In a rigid vessel, you have 1 kilogram of steam. 
The initial height of the piston is 0.25 meters and the cross-sectional area is 1 meter squared. The initial pressure is 10 bar. What is the initial temperature? Since the dimensions of your piston is given, you can calculate the volume. With the mass, you can then calculate the specific volume. Then you need to go to your steam tables. We always start at the saturated table. Since pressure is given, we look at the pressure table. We go to 1 MPa and first look if the specific volume we calculated is between the liquid and vapor volume. We can see that it is not. The volume is much higher than the vapor volume and thus we know that it is a superheated vapor. So we go to the superheated table and look for 1 MPa. Then we need to get the temperature at 0.25 meters cube per kilogram. We can see that the specific volume is not listed in the table and thus we need to interpolate. We interpolate between these values and get an initial temperature of 281 degrees Celsius. Then the system cools down to 80 degrees Celsius. What is the final pressure of the system and what is the quality of the system? Since they asked for quality, we already know that this is a mixture. So we start at the saturation tables. Since temperature is given, we use the temperature table. Then we need to look at 80 degrees. Since volume is constant, we know that the volume of state 2 will also be 0 0.25. We look at the vapor and liquid volume columns to test whether the volume of our system lies between these values. If it does not, we would know that it is superheated vapor or subcooled liquid, and we would have to go look at those tables. But since 0 0.25 lies between the values, we know that it is a liquid vapor mixture. And thus, we can just read off the final pressure. To calculate the quality, we can just use our system's volume and the liquid and vapor volume from our steam tables. We plug it into our formula and get a very low quality of 0.07. A low quality indicates more liquid than vapor. Now let's look at phase diagrams to help us understand our processes. There are three commonly used diagrams. PT diagrams, which is pressure temperature diagram. PV diagrams, which is a pressure volume diagram, and PVT diagrams, which is a pressure volume temperature diagram. Let's look at the PT diagram. In this diagram, you can see that it is split into sections. These sections are called domes, each representing a different state, solid, liquid, and vapor. On the line separating these domes, there is a unique combination of temperature and pressure where there are two phases present. According to the Gibbs phase rule, in these domes, temperature and pressure are linked, meaning that knowing one determines the other and fixes the phase. But on this line, temperature and pressure don't restrict it to one phase alone. Let's look at the PV diagram. Again, you can see how the diagram is separated into domes. In the PV diagram, there are a bit more domes. The usual, solid, liquid and vapor. But then there's a solid liquid dome, a liquid vapor and a solid vapor dome. In these extra domes, the pressure and volume combination does not constrain to one phase alone, and thus there exist two phases in these domes. Lastly is the PVT diagram, which combines both the PV and the PT diagram in a 3D representation. On all these diagrams, a critical point is indicated. This point is indicated at the top of the liquid vapor dome. It is the point where you can't distinguish between the vapor and liquid phase. To understand phase diagrams better, let's consider a piston cylinder assembly. We start with a subcooled liquid. As heat or energy is added to the system, the liquid warms up until it is at boiling point. It is not yet boiling, but if any more heat is added, it will start to boil. This is called the saturated liquid phase. Then, as we add more heat, the liquid starts to boil and we enter the saturated liquid vapor mixture phase. The quality here is low, since there are more liquid than vapor, but as we add more heat, more liquid change to vapor until we are at the saturated vapor phase, where the quality is zero. At this point, if any energy is removed, it would cause the vapor to condense back to a liquid. When any more heat is added, the vapor will heat up, since no more phase changes can occur. Up to now, there was only latent heat, which resulted in phase changes, but now temperature will increase. This is called the superheated vapor phase. The different phases can be seen on the phase diagrams for PV and PT. Another important detail when doing calculations with your system is path and state functions. 
Both functions are quantities that depend on the path taken, like work and heat. State functions are properties that depend on the state only, like temperature and pressure. This concept can help simplify our processes significantly, and here's how. Let's say you have a piston cylinder assembly with initial pressure of 2 MPa and volume of 0.11 meters cubed per kilogram. You allow it to cool down until the second state is reached, 1 MPa and 0.25 meters cubed per kilogram. The PV diagram of this theoretical process looks like this. To do calculations with this can be tricky, thus we create theoretical paths. Since pressure and volume are state functions, the path does not matter and we can use a simpler path to do calculations, like the following. This process consists out of two steps. First, an isochoric cooling, then the second step, an isobaric heating. When you do calculations with these hypothetical paths, you will get the same answer as the initial path, but it will be far less complicated to do the calculations. Lastly, let's look at the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is the most famous and simplest equation of state. An equation of state is an equation that relates the properties pressure, temperature and volume. The ideal gas law is based on a few assumptions. Firstly, gas consists of molecules that are infinitesimally small, hard, round spheres. These spheres occupy no volume and exert only forces through collisions on each other. Here is the equations. There are two options. P stands for pressure in both, V can be molar volume or volume, N stands for moles, R is the gas constant, and T is temperature. It is important to note that the ideal gas law isn't perfectly accurate and works only at low pressures and high temperatures. And that is three ways to simplify your system and calculations. I hope this video helped simplify these concepts. Next, we'll look at the first law of thermodynamics and start with complicated calculations.